talk just a little bit about your previous body of work where you began to focus on the portrait of war vets and uh, soldiers? I will. Thank you. So thank you, thank you Michelle for curating this show and Rita and the Mystic and everybody for coming. And uh, of course the cake has to show up. <laughs> Can you compete with cake? I haven't, I haven't had sugar in two months, man. I'm already to jump over this railing. <laughs> so, uh, about three years ago, uh, I started a project called Citizen Soldier. And I just finished another project called Overturn the Artifice. And I, I was at that place where it was, what am I going to do next? And, uh, and, and because of that project, this new space had opened up where I, was, I used to be a uh, painter, a studio painter, and it was all about just me in there alone. And since the Turner Saul Award, I started collaborating with other people, and the spirit of collaboration opened up a lot of horizons for me and a great experience that I hadn't had before. Uh, and because of that, um, and, I, and I should say that. Uh, a big part of my, my work uh, is because of uh, meditation, and I practice TM, Transcendental Meditation, and I've been meditating for 17 years, twice a day, so I get a lot of ideas in meditation. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I can say, you know, I'm just sort of consciously, in a way, out, out in this space, thinking about things. It's actually with my eyes closed where ideas come from in a crystalline way. And so that's sort of where the idea of Citizen Soldier came. And it came with my own reckoning as an American uh, about the fact that we've been at war. Uh, you look very familiar. Hi, Jack. Jack. <laughs> I thought about you yesterday, bro. I swear to God, I thought about you yesterday. We like to sew together. That is amazing. Wow. I'm just talking about TM and, the, and, and how you get connected. I thought about you yesterday. <laughs> oh my God, I haven't seen him since JFK like 10 years ago. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna give you a hug, bro. <laughs> So, so that's the power of meditation, man. When you have, when, when you're, when you're tuned in to the frequency right now. So, um, anyways, I'll try to make this quick with the. Uh, so my earliest memories are of clips of the Vietnam War on the tube, and that's sort of how I came into the world. And then I had a cousin who was older than me, and I was really close with this guy. And then he just disappeared. He was, he went to Vietnam. He did two tours. He was a a medic and I've never seen him since. So in a way he was like my personal ghost of war and as a little kid I had this affection for this person that just disappeared and um, an incompletion let's say and so all at once I just thought well when we also hired a guy where I work as a shoe shiner uh, who, who said to me when you're not in uniform nobody knows who you are and I thought well I've, I've had my own trauma in my own lifetime and in, 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 in a very instrumental way of uh, overcoming that trauma has been in just telling my story and unburdening myself of uh, my fears and into a trusted, un understanding person. So I thought, well, what if as an artist I can provide that for a soldier? So tell me your story, I'll take your picture, I'll paint your portrait, and I'll build this archive of stories uh, these soldiers, because you know they come home and, and you know you're kind of trained in our culture not to ask the soldier what happened, and they're not going to say anything about it, about all of this. So I wanted to try to get at uh, uh, the moral reality of a, of a culture that's perpetually at, at warfare through art, and and painting uh, to me has always been revelatory, and I've always felt that it has tremendous capacity to uplift consciousness. And I also think of it as like a lens, like, like an instrument where I can look and through aesthetic transformation, it can tell a whole different kind of story and, and resolve conflicts. And so I, 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 I made these interviews, then I made stop action animation. 
uh, of the soldiers where you see uh, their image come to life before you are listening to uh, the, the interviews, and it's really phenomenal and amazing. And I was bringing documentary film, journalism, a lot of different elements together in painting itself. And so having done that, and I started making paintings of soldiers meditating. So basically the American portrait is what I was going at. Like, who are we as a people? And, um, and questions like, what good is art? What am I painting for? What am I painting about? And, uh, and then I thought of, uh, you know, what are these soldiers fighting for? And, and are they fighting for the treasure in the temple? And is that treasure just commodity? Is it just money also? So I started making collages, and so instead of the soldiers in an intimate look at someone that I knew, I was culling images off the internet and making collages with iconic images, these paintings, wondering if there's any power in them, if there's any juice in these things, is there any, any if there's a social value in that where they lift you up, you know, and like with these archetypal energies getting released, and I found out it's true. So I just made these collages and and, uh, and I got really excited. And I mostly operate out of intuition. So it's not, I don't, I feel my way through a painting. And, and that's just how they get made. And in a lot of ways a painting is just made in a pure abstract way. And the color is intuitive. And, and uh, you know, it's about putting edges together and forms. And, and then when it comes down with the figures, like how they are speaking to each other, relate to each other. And, and uh, in a way, I don't stop until I can hear their hearts beating, or I can even feel like there's moisture in the nostrils where they're breathing, and the kind of temperature, and and um, so I've already determined that there's no way I can ever get any of this right. <laughs> and there's always there's so much to say, and these paintings are so layered with meaning, and uh, uh, there's no way I can get at it all. Uh, uh, I think what they bring is uh, ideas of war and peace and uh, the best of us and the worst of us. Um, That's uh, part of it. Yeah, is that enough? Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so am I, you know, I, she just told me to shut the hell up. <laughs> Can we ask so, questions? Yeah, yeah please. Go ahead. So you said because the collaging of this imagery with the iconic paintings and the soldiers, that's why I was wondering, looking at them, I don't see any trace of any sketch underneath, so are you preparing it? Because the compositions are beautifully well thought out, put together. Is that something you're just so freaking good at that you just <laughs> put it on? Or did you plan it out ahead? Did you physically? Yeah, it? yeah, it's, I'm yeah. using photographs. I'm mean, literally yeah. cutting them out, okay, laying so you them did, down. Yeah, so you, Plan yeah. out your compositions and then you go mm -hmm. for it because mm -hmm. we can see how fast you're painting and how fresh it is. Mm -hmm. But there's definitely thought behind it, so that answers the yeah. question. That's a, and, and so this way also, since you know we're contemporary artists, like I'm using that machine, the computer, yeah. as a medium. And a medium is like meditation, is a place, you know, I'm going into this thing and I'm coming out with something. And uh, like if I might, might just make one comment, mm -hmm. Jack, is that all right? Yes, yes. <laughs> is that these paintings are really packed, and there's a lot of layers to them. They're very, they, they, to me, they operate like a poem, where one thing can mean many things uh, and are very layered. And I would invite you, as you look at these, to notice some things like, you know, the relationship of the, um, the image that's in the back from some of these iconic paintings, uh, the sent, some of the titles from Pieta to Madonna, uh, to the pairings of the figures. Um, so we invite, would you like to say something else? Oh, Jeremy mentioned about, you know, through Picasso and all that, older traditions, traditions in the Renaissance. It's just a way to bring bring like religious iconography to the big, to the, to the forefront and, and uh, I mean, these images just, back to the collage, you know, they just, uh, the soldier happened to look this way, you know, the one downstairs where he's, looks like he's expiring, and then lay that on top of the dance or, or the blue the blue nude, and it became a Pieta. I mean, I didn't plan on it, it just happened, and it sort of was a ready-made, mm -hmm. you know? And, 
But it, I think it's really interesting then to think about like the blue nude and that whole tradition which that symbolizes as if that's the mother and then yes. the soldier yes. is the yeah. child yeah. without trying to pin it down too yeah. closely. So um, I hope that when you look at all of these paintings, you'll you'll start to look and see all of those different layers. And, and back to like the mother and the muse and all that, but painting has always been my treasure and a place where I found nourishment and healing and solace and comfort and information and, and that uplifting consciousness. And uh, and so uh, it's not surprising that, that uh, well, I mean, realizing like taking the soldiers, taking them off the field of battle and placing them in this place where they can get restored, you know? It's, it's um, become, the canvas becomes a healing. Yeah, place. I think so. <laughs> so I, I saw and really liked the uh, shoe shine image that was in your book. And then when you mentioned that person as a person that you had met and talked to, I have to ask, what was his story? The shoe shine drawings? Uh, the shoe polish drawings? The, the, the man himself that they're based on. The, the guy who's holding, he's, sh he's shining a shoe. He's talking about the big uh, arch. Oh, oh, city. he's right there. <laughs> He's right there. Should I go up there and talk? Yeah. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> go for it. Tell the story. I'll tell the story. Well, it happened. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, what do you want me to say? Well, uh, nothing big. <laughs> so that's what that's what I do for a living. I'm a shoe shiner. And uh, so metaphorically, you mean, or no? I actually, no. yeah, oh, that's you, you actually do shoot. Yeah, oh, cool. yeah. <laughs> so I, I work. Oh, with okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So you take you take this old shoe and you transform it into something brilliant and magical <laughs> yeah. with pigment and brushes it's and medium and rags. And, and, and paint. Paint. Yeah. Can you tell us where the image of those shoes came from? Oh yeah, the pile of shoes uh, from Auschwitz. Wow, good. Yeah, so I mean, the shoe good. shiner, yeah. So he's wow. he's it's uh it's an act of atonement and uh and veneration and so he's shining the shoes of the vanquished. Yeah. The murdered. It's great, he looks like a superhero. Yeah, yeah right. And then but one of his hands is a foot. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Worst superpower ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I know nothing about ours, but can I say the more I look at them, the more I see every time. I think every that time. you will. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. Are there any other questions, or shall we continue our conversations amongst each other? Okay. Yeah. Thank you.